So in the 14 years we've been together, I could probably count on two hands how many times I've been to a service with her. He is not a churchy man. We only been going to CCB for about a year. And really what spurred us into that was just wanting that good Christian foundation for our kids. And so it started with that, and then it really got the ball rolling with everything that we went through. She goes, I don't know what's wrong, but you have no amniotic fluid. There's no chance of survival. And at that point, you know, you get hit with that in the gut, and I kind of lost it right there. And I remember telling my mom that I don't know if I can do this. I mean, I know that I can, I just don't know if I emotionally can do it. She knew that we had been going to CCB. She contacted the office, I think it was the after hours line, I think within her like hanging up the phone, I was getting a call from Daniel Connor just saying, what do you need? What can we do? One of the first questions was he asked if we had a small group. And we said no. There were a lot of, I guess, excuses that went through my mind. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I'm antisocial. <laughs> and so Daniel basically got back with us and said, we have the perfect group for you, I think. Brian and I looked at each other and we're like, what do we, like, what do we have to lose? Like, stop making excuses, let's just go. And it was scary walking in. There's an informal guideline to go by about the past sermon. And so when Ryan asked if we had to share anything, I just kind of felt compelled to discuss what was going on, which then compelled another couple in the group to kind of discuss what they were going through. It was almost like each couple had something heavy on their minds that they hadn't shared over the past couple months. That, that Brian and Ashley coming and, and, and sharing their story and that, that um, incredibly emotional time um, just really opened up the group to share their stories. To this day we talk about it and I feel like that night really glued our group together. So after Cody passed, um, obviously we were in a very dark place. The very next morning we had members from our church group there at the hospital. It was, it was comforting just knowing that th those folks were in the thick of it with us emotionally. I feel like these relationships are something that are gonna last a lifetime. The relationships in life are what really mean the most. And so just having them be, I don't know, in, just completely invested in us as a family. You know, there's been times where I've gone golfing with Ryan or Ashley's in a workout group with a couple of the other girls. They become part of your life. So it's not just your Tuesday night church group. Like our whole week is like sprinkled with pieces of our group. Things look better. Um, our faith is stronger, our relationship is stronger, our kids like it. I think immersing ourselves in faith in a neighborhood group um, and just generally trying to be better, I think really saved what sanity we had. Because you have other people that are like-minded, but they have a different viewpoint of how to look at things. And so when you can take that lens and apply it to your life, things get clearer. And I don't even really look at his death as bad because it brought, brought us back to God. That's really hard to say, but I think without our neighborhood group, it's crazy to think where we might have been.